I want to pull up this story from the Post Millennial. Kirsten Cinema will not seek re-election in Arizona. And I really don't care if she does or doesn't. She, uh, she won her seat as a Democrat, switched to independent. What's, what's the real story here is that she said, I believe in my approach, but it's not what America wants right now. Hmm. I love Arizona. I'm so proud of what we've delivered because I choose civility, understanding, listening, working together to get stuff done. I will leave the Senate at the like end of this year. Is that like a dig at Lake or something? No, the issue here is that you have the enlightened centrist types and they are fewer and far between as of late, but they still exist where they argue that you're either on the left or the right. There's no middle ground anymore. I would argue that this show actually is fairly moderate, but there is reality. And the reality is Joe Biden was in, involved in the Burisma scandal. Joe Biden flew to Ukraine and said, if you don't fire the prosecutor, you're not getting the billion dollars. It was testified, I believe it was Devin Archer, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, they called, that Hunter Biden called D.C. and said, we need help with this. The prosecutor's investigating us. And then Biden flies out of, at the end of the year and then basically says, fire this prosecutor. We've uncovered yeah, Matt, so much. Matt Taibbi's done great reporting Absolutely. on that as well. Yeah. And well, Taibbi's and not and a conservative Biden admitted guy. that. Biden but, admitted that. And, and the point is this. The left will argue it's not true when it is. And the enlightened centrist cinema types will say, can't we all just get along? Now, the left has this meme where there's the Klan and there's black people and there's a guy in the middle with this smirking face holding up a sign saying compromise. That's how the left wants to frame this, as if they are right and, if you, if, and you're trying to compromise with crazies. Now, I agree with the general idea of the enlightened centrist types like cinema who are arguing, you need to be more moderate. You're, 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 you're too conservative. You're supporting the right. You're supporting Trump and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, some things are just true. Mm -hmm. some, some, some things are reality. Joe Biden did these things. We, we now know from Hunter Biden that he was the big guy in these emails, getting these kickbacks, influence peddling. Granted, that was after he, was, he left the vice presidency. But if you look at things that are true, and then you look at, say, Adam Schiff and Jamie Raskin, they are lying about everything. Nancy Pelosi, she is lying about everything. There is a reality and there is a propaganda manipulation. And if you are on the side of reality, they will call you right wing no matter what, because it is not your policy positions that make you left or right. It's what you know to be true that makes you right wing or conservative. Well, essentially, the definition from their perspective is anyone who is not um, lockstep with the woke agenda is right wing. And to your point, there's this look, there's almost it's like we're living in like a fun house mirror version of reality. If you watch like CNN or something like that. So there is. There's almost two types of centrism. So one type of centrism is like, hey, I don't think we should be way too far to the left or way too far to the right. We should just meet in the middle with Hillary Clinton and John McCain. You know, yeah, but then you're kind of like, wait a minute, but you're the wait most radical people on the planet. You're the guys who want to, uh, uh, you know, bankrupt the country fighting every war around the world. And then there's also a different type of kind of like centrism or like moderate position that's just like hey i'm not like some crazy right winger who's saying that like all women need to be in the kitchen and never speak in public and i'm not some crazy left winger who's saying like little kids should have genital mutilation surgery <laughs> i'm just saying like hey let's talk about this what's and the kind middle of ground be, between the two the middle ground between the well, two it's just kind is, of like but oh. this is sort of this sort of goes back to what you were talking about with regard to ruling through crisis right mm -hmm. and leading by crisis how can you have a moderate position when you have a crisis? Well, like, but, what's the moderate position on on do we put the house the house fire out or not? Well, and, well no, finish the thought. No, and we've had several major crises that have been like sort of fabricated and pushed on us, and there are some real ones. So what you have is like you have the immigration crisis, but you also had the Biden, you know, Biden and Harris going on about how racism was a crisis and the environment is a crisis and all of this. So once you once you are instilling in people that it is life and death. What is the middle ground between life and death? The, the, the issue that we are facing in this country is that Donald Trump represents centrists and Democrats and Biden represent the fringe far left. And I can exemplify this very, very simply. The right wing position on misgendering would be if you were born female and you tell people to call you a male to do so would be to misgender you because your gender is female. The left wing position is if you were born female and wish to be called male, you have to call this person the pronoun they want. So that's the left and the right position. The right under Donald Trump is asking social media platforms to take the middle approach and just not ban anyone. That is the centrist position. How about we go full, full right wing on this one and say, Elon, right now, I'd like you to institute a policy that says if a person has a preferred pronoun and you use it, you will be banned. That's the right wing position, right? 
don't use people's preferred pronouns? How about we take the centrist approach that we've all been arguing for and just don't ban anyone. People can block whoever they're pissed off by. This is the issue right now. When you brought up the, the, the right wants women to never speak again and, and be in the kitchen. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I had to make a choice between, I had no choice. It was one or the other. It was child sex change operations happening in mass. Or, <laughs> yeah, no. or women I'm going to agree with you on this choice. Yes. Right. It's like, we, I think even women would agree. Like, I'd rather be in the kitchen than have that happen. Yes. But that's not even a reality because the right is not actually arguing for women to be in the kitchen. Well, it, some I'm, people are. But here's, here's the question sure, I have. Sure. What is, what is the most extreme mainstream Trump uh, Trump supporter position. I mean, I, I'm talking about in the mainstream, in the press, among Trump supporters, what is their most extreme right wing position? Maybe um, just shutting uh, down the border entirely. Shutting down the border? Yeah. No, 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 not entirely. shutting down the border. If you, if you want to be fair about this, what is the most extreme right wing position that, that Trump supporters have had? Yes. Yeah. Well, look, I'll say popular among Trump supporters, ma uh, mainstream, meaning prominent Trump supporters, prominent people yes. have advocated this. I'd say it's a. Uh, uh, deportation of every illegal immigrant and cutting off all trade with China, which I both do think are like, look, uh, e e on a scale of one to 10, where would you put that in terms of extreme in terms of extremism? I mean, look, cutting off. If you were actually and by the way, I'm completely for complete border control and all of that. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about actually at this point, we've got we don't actually know what the numbers are. I mean, it's Probably Upward of 10 million. Nor I know. Oh, oh, it's it's north of 20 million right. for, yeah, sure. for sure. If you're talking well, about 2021, a, I think it's a police 20. Right? Well, it was 12 was the number they always used forever. And then the government admits that over seven have come in since. Right, right, so, so, but but we're, like, we're getting off on a tangent. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm trying to get to the point. If you're talking about a police action that is going to attempt to be deporting north of 20 million um, uh, people in this country. They're not making that argument. You are. No, no, no. The estimates not... are 10 to 15. Uh, so okay, if they're... fine, fine. No, let's it, say it's 10. Let's, let's... let's say it's 10. Sure. If you're saying that your argument is to deport them all, I'm saying that you are going to have to form a Gestapo-like police force mm -hmm. in order to do that. We don't okay. know who these people are. We don't know where to track them. You're going to have to be kicking down doors. You're going to be checking papers. I get it. I get it. I get it. Now, and cutting I, off. I, 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 I get and it. The other my, argument. My question is. How extreme on a scale of one to 10 do you oh, believe well, it is? The, okay, so the point that I'm just making is if you actually, these are kind of bumper stickers. I don't think most of them have actually thought this through, but if you actually think through the, the ramifications of what it would take to enact these policies, they are pretty extreme. I'd put that one pretty high. Like that's, Okay, that's, now let's, so my point is this. If we were to actually assess the most extreme position held under Trump supporters, which is deport all of the people who have broken the law, which is to simplify it, and we need to enforce the law as it was written and actually uh, hold, hold accountable the criminals in this country, right? I don't disagree with now, you on now, that. But, oh, okay, and but and sure. I will give you, you would need to create a massive police force to do so. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Compare that to what is happening now. Okay, so let's say that's the proposal from Trump supporters, and we believe the most extreme position, and I think it's a fair assessment, is a massive deportation system, a massive expansion of government power to track down and deport 10 to 15 million people. Right now, not even an idea, not even a proposal. Yes. <laughs> yes. The left has so an open border, bringing in tens of million, bringing in 10 plus million people yes. and child sex change operations. So this is, this, seen, but I was about to, to say this. I, I think you're right. I think the asymmetry here is that that's just kind of like a bumper sticker that Trump supporters throw out. Right. But if they were to just be offered, hey, we'll build the wall and the influx will stop, they'd very clearly settle for that. Exactly. If we're talking about what's actually happening in reality versus what just their imagined desired positions are, yes, there's this, really no comparison. And so the issue we're facing is moderate Americans, maybe slightly right-leaning, I don't even know if it's fair to say. I don't know. Uh, Colin, Colin Wright's meme about the left moving further and further left and forcing the middle to be called the center-right is a great point. Yes. When, I'm going to stress this again, when the Trump base... The far right simply says, hey, can we not have a rule banning people for speech? That is not even the right wing position on misgendering. It's not. It's a centrist compromise. And the far left says, no, ban anyone who doesn't agree with my ideology. Well, look, I mean, when when the right I'm, I'm old enough to remember when the right wing had real power over not just the 
not just the political collapse, but also just over the culture. And it was immediately when in the wake that? of 9-11. Oh, and they point. And bit. they weren't just trying to say, hey, everyone, but say what was, you want to say. That's very different they, from Trump, though. No, no, no. I'm not saying it's the same as Trump. Fake, too, because... Well, look, I'm just saying, the, the, at that point, the Dixie Chicks were getting... <laughs> they, they were the cancel the victims of cancel culture. And Bill Maher... They got, got canceled a, again by the left. Yeah, well, yes, I know, because yeah. now it's for d chicks, not Dixie. But whatever. Uh, no, but, no, no, it was Dixie. Oh, I thought it was... Yeah, the, Dixie's a, re or, it was a reference to antebellum, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's too stupid for me <laughs> to keep up with. But there, look, Bill Maher got fired from ABC, and it wasn't from being canceled from the left. It was from being canceled from the right. I'm just saying that... Do, do you remember th what you said, though? This, there is something that it's very easy when the other side... Look, listen, I don't even disagree with what you're saying. I'm just making the point that it's very easy when one side has all of the power for the other side who has less power to go, hey, we shouldn't impose power on the other one. Right. You know, but like, so that's part of the reason why right wingers are just saying like, hey, let's just not ban anyone because they know all of the institutions are controlled by their enemies. So we got some updates. Texas, uh, Trump has won. I don't even know why I'm reading it. Alabama. <laughs> uh, Alabama, Maine. Arkansas, Maine. Maine. Well, Massachusetts. Ma Maine's interesting because they tried to remove him from the ballot. Yeah. And so. well, that was obvious because they wanted to disenfranchise their own voters and prevent them from voting for yeah. Donald Trump. To protect democracy. To protect democracy. Right. Yeah. It's George Colorado. W. Bush, uh, Colorado George... is a uh, tw Trump is up twenty eight in Colorado with thirty two percent in. So that's going to come next. Nikki Haley. Massachusetts. I mean, it's really yeah. Haley is still Haley's projected two percent in Vermont, but you know Vermont is stupid anyway. In this, in this map made by NBC <laughs> News, where they have Trump and Haley with different colors, I'm willing to bet that they actually did not even have a color code for Haley. And then when she won DC, the graphic graphics guy's like. <sighs> <laughs> All right, I'll make it. <laughs> but I he like just shaded it, this, it up a little bit. Right, that's why it's so shade. similar. It's so it doesn't look green. like she's getting as uh, massacred the way she is. I mean, this is this is rough. This girl is is not uh, pulling off whatever victory. She what is she doing? To think. I don't. No, other than listen. just wasting donor money that could go down. She's wasting Democrat him. money primarily. I mean, it's mostly. And that's okay, Democrat I guess. Money. Listen, listen she is gonna she is gonna walk out of this and go get some job on the board of a finance company or a weapons company. Maybe they're gonna make. Get, a university president. Yeah, she's going to she's going to NBC. Yeah, she's going to walk into millions and millions of dollars for she's, doing this. So, that's the game. Unfortunately, that's the actual game. L look, Vivek called her out all the time for it, mm -hmm. right? She left uh the the Boeing, UN yeah. being like not having that much money. She went she got put on the board of Boeing and I think was uh getting paid something from another weapons company. She's she got paid. Now she's doing their bidding and she will be handsomely rewarded she, for it. She, as sad as that is. She uh, represents say. the MSN be see right mm -hmm. yeah the people yes. who used to be very well said. but only watch msnbc no but just and, and just even like the republicans who come on msnbc all day oh, yeah. every day to go hey i'm a republican and even i'm fed up with donald trump and like that's the just view. their whole that's their whole role is to be like hey, look even the conservative admits that the liberals are right that's kind of the the game here and that's really what at least we should understand what needs to be attacked is that it's not a, this isn't really a left right divide or a question of who's in the center or who's in the extremes the question is that how do we deal with this incredibly corrupt system that is anti all of us whether you identify as left or right you're still getting ripped off by this system it doesn't even matter like you could be the you could be some champion in what you think is the left wing's culture war. Like you're like, I'm out here protesting for trans rights. You're just a dupe. You're being ripped off by inflation just like everyone else is. You're just a useful idiot. Do you, do you remember when there were protesters out of a hot, uh, there were, there were anti-mask protesters and Antifa came and attacked them? Yeah. yeah. There, there was also uh, a protest in DC where it was stop corporate censorship and Antifa came and attacked them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what about defending massive corporations makes you like anti-establishment? I was, at, I was at a skate park less like two years ago, and it's a skate park. And there's a big Black Lives Matter spray painted on the ramps, and some kids were sitting by it. And I started busting out laughing. And I was like, which one of you idiots spray painted Amazon's corporate logo on the ramp? <laughs> <laughs> I will punk rock Walmart. Woohoo! Go there go buy there is something once. really funny about, like, the fact that it doesn't even give any of them pause that all these giant corporations are on their side. 
Like from your own ideological view, wouldn't that be like, wait, they're supposed to be against us. No, they're not supposed. And uh, the other funny thing was in 2020 when the, uh, the BLM riot like got out of control and they went and smashed up the CNN building. <laughs> and then it was like the first time CNN went, Hey, wait, in Atlanta. Like, but we're yeah, on yeah, your yeah. side. We, We've been we, delays. And you're like, yeah, they're just smashing stuff, dude. Do you they're think, not really thinking about it. Do you right. think Tom Morello, like, rationalizes, or do you think he just lies to it? Like, he just lies. Like, he's, he's, he's or I should say, do you, do you think he rationalizes it to himself, or do you think he, he knows what's really going on and is lying to everybody else? I mean, my guess is he knows what's going on and is just lying. But I don't know. I'm not inside anyone like, else's head. You know, it's funny because on the way here, we're listening to uh, 90s Alternative and, and System of a Down comes on and they have prison, what's it called, prison song. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I like System of a Down. I don't know them personally. They're not as bad as, uh, I, I don't know them to be bad, actually. I know Rage Against the Machine is rage on behalf of the machine because they've yeah, been very active sure. in supporting the machine. But isn't it kind of funny that uh, we have <laughs> these bands that are extremely wealthy, massively supported, internationally famous, and they claim to oppose the machine? It's almost like the machine actually supported them the whole time. Well, or at least they got sucked up into that thing that was the machine, you know? And like, you know, it, it was so like comical. Well, the machine does manufacture things. Well, but like they, they had these like these bands who have these songs, you know, and they're just like, shut up. I won't do what you tell me to do. Hey, guys, make sure to get your COVID vaccine. You know, no, like, no, 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 no. Like, Did you see uh, which, which band was it where they were like clean hands? We all have clean hands. There, there and everyone's like, cheering for it. There was uh, this venue in Who Brooklyn? was that? Who was that? I, forget. I don't like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a German, that German <laughs> word in it. Kaiser, yeah, Kaiser, Kaiser cheese. cheese. Oh. Yeah. Do you guys Aren't remember they that like clip? an Irish band or something? I don't know. It's so disturbing. And the, the, the line, the line is "F you, I won't do what you tell me." Yeah. And I'm like, they really need to change that to "F you, you better do what we tell you." Right. Please yeah. give me direction because I don't know what to do. Well, there was it. there was like there was this venue in Brooklyn that I was like trying to go see something at at one point, and they had this whole basically manifesto that you would just sign off on about social justice. And if you don't feel this way, then don't come to the venue. And I was like, okay, then I, I totally won't come to the venue. That's also fine. And I yeah. hate this band now for playing here. I don't even remember what band it was. They're off the playlist. But isn't there, Good. you know, there's something so interesting to me about how like all of this stuff, like even if you trace it back to its actual like origin, and people can argue about whether this is like from the Frankfurt School or critical theory or like where exactly the intellectual kind of roots of all of this wokeism comes from. But there is something so interesting about how it did, at least to some degree, start as this really radical left wing thought and then yet was embraced by every rich capitalist and every powerful government you know, official in the country and is now kind of being pushed on people and that they took this thing and they realized how powerful it was to like divide everybody and insist that you sign up with their views and turn this. It, it's just, there's something like so interesting about that. That to was me. the compromise. That, well, it's not their just compromise that. was like, we get to do capitalism and sure we'll hire, we'll hire extra people. I, yeah, whatever, I don't even think know? it was, I don't even, yeah, I guess to some degree that's true, right? Like the compromise was like, almost like in the wake of Occupy Wall Street, the compromise was that JP Morgan goes, okay, look, here's the deal. We get to do everything we've been doing and we will send our white executives to diversity and training. And we'll pay for your abortions and, and we'll cut your kids' dicks off. That's fine. Yeah, I guess that's you like know? the thing, right? And we'll but add at the like same extra, time, you know, and, diverse people to our board per the law in California. And in this, in this kind of weird sick compromise where, you know, the, which by the way is, Anyone, if you're really interested in this, go read The Progressive Era by Murray Rothbard, because this is actually the story of the original Progressive Era as well. That This is the whole story, is that there were these kind of good, at least possibly well-intentioned leftists who were like progressives, and they were like, hey, we should have a managed economy, so it does more for the little guy and less for the big guy. And then basically all of the robber barons were like, oh, yeah, 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 we totally should have a managed economy. We'll be the ones to manage it. And then they just basically took it over and made it. It was like a right wing coup against the left wing idea in some sense, broadly speaking. And 
But today, think about how much that is literally what led to the transformation of the, also, well, let me just say that, that that's what led to the transformation of the left wing being the pro-war group that they're now all going well we have to put ukrainian flags up or we have to you know what i mean and like the we, because thing. it's like because they got trained to just follow orders and be obedient but that's what our schooling was doing our schooling for decades has for been teaching beginning. people to be managed it teaches people how to like follow instructions, how to sit quietly. Like I'll never forget when my way more than when decades. my when my son got in trouble in like kindergarten at circle time, and the teacher called me in, and it was like super serious. And the teacher was like, uh, "Your son won't sit still during circle time." And I was like, "Okay, what's he doing?" Well, he's running in circles, and I was like, "So, like he's doing like it is circle time. What's the problem? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he is taking circles, and it's part of his activity, and he's running around like he's a little boy." That's what little boys do. They run. I gotta. I gotta make sure I get a correction here. Sorry, real quick, because uh, someone super chatted this. John, uh, how do you pronounce his name? Dolmayan. John Dolmayan, the drummer for System of a Down, is a vocal Trump supporter. So, okay. uh, shout out to him for standing up for his beliefs. It's not even about being a Trump supporter. While well, shout, shout him out, but he's he, he's he's said he, people have Probably attacked him over a lot it. Of hell he's for that. Getting a lot of heat for it. So I mad respect. But yeah, I, do, I, I do just think that, a ballsy I do think that position like, to take in his world on the sort of Absolutely. on the sort of conservative side or the more thoughtful side or even if you want to call it centrist or whatever. We spend so much time trying to dig into where these ideas came from when then tracking the history of it. You know, Chris Rufo does that. He's excellent at it. James Lindsay does that like really stellar at digging into that stuff. Jordan figuring, Peterson. You know, figuring all out exactly where it came from. We can isolate it and we can pinpoint it, but why can't we just rip it out by the roots? And why can't we make a stand and say what it is we do believe in and what we do want Social going media. forward? Well, thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.